Hey Divination, my name is Karthik from Design School for WordPress Beginners, the place where I teach how to design, build and customize your website. If you're new here, consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on unique and exciting stuff that I teach on this channel. Let's get into the video. In this video, I'll show you how to add CSS animations to your Divi website using the Divi Builder so you can achieve something like this. So the element changes its color, moves its position and returns back to its original position. Before explaining animations, let me give you a short intro on animations. Animations are basically changing CSS properties from one value to another value. These are similar to animations that you see in video editors such as Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere Pro. And the way animations are achieved in CSS is by using something called key points. Think of them as checkpoints. So from point A to point B, you can specify which properties you want for that particular animation. And remember, as these are CSS animations, these can be applied to any section, column, row or module. So the same code can be pasted into anything and it will apply the same animation irrespective of what it, except few text based animations which I will talk about in a while. All you need to do is to pick the element. It can be section, row, column or a module that you want to animate. Click on it. Click on the settings cog. Under advanced, go to custom CSS and under main element, paste the code that I'll share with you in the description down below. So what exactly is this code doing? Let's get into it. So the first thing that we want is to specify initial properties such as background color, color or any other properties that you may know using CSS. And if you're wondering how to change various properties. I made a CSS tutorial again, go check that out. Link will be in the description for DV Builder. And the first property that I specified here is background color and I gave it to black. You can click on this and you can change it to whatever you want just by using the color wheel. So you can have a blue background or anything or you can even type a color here instead of this color wheel so you can simply type blue there and the next thing I want to change of this row or this particular module is position so you just want to specify that the position is relative and don't worry about this it basically helps us animate the position of this particular row so this is the main stuff so this webkit prefix is nothing but for Safari browser and you may want to add Moz prefix for Mozilla browser you want to add O prefix for Opera browser to keep this simple I'll just explain it with general syntax or general pattern and I'll also share all the prefixes in the description so don't worry about that so the first thing is animation name of course you want to give this animation any name that you want it can be anything unique just name your animation and the next thing you want to do is to specify the duration of the animation so for how long the animation should last and the next thing is animation iteration count so how many times the animation should play so if you change this to 3 let's actually do it let's change this to 3 let me cut the code and paste it into a game and watch what happens to this particular row. So that's once. The second time. And third time. As you can see the animation played three times. That's because I specified animation iteration count to be three. If you specify four, well the animation will play four times. And if you want the animation to play forever, just type infinite. And the animation just keeps on playing and the element will continuously be animated. It won't stop. So you can specify a count. It's always better to have a number instead of infinite unless and until you actually explicitly want it. And the next thing is animation direction. So it, it can take various values. So when you say reverse, so you can think of these keyframes as points. So by 0% I mean when the animation just starts 
and the properties that I want this element to have. And when it reaches a quarter of its duration, these are the properties that I want the element to have. And when it reaches 50% and so on, you can add any number here followed by a percentage so that when the animation reaches that particular duration, it will give the properties based on the code that you specify here. So that's what, and when you specify animation direction, if it's not specified, well, it will play from keyframe zero, keyframe 25% and so on. So it will play in this direction. If you play reverse, it will start from 0%, it goes back to 100%, then it comes back to 75%, 50%, 25% and finally this. And what it exactly means is that it goes in the opposite direction as it's supposed to be. That's what this particular thing is. So let's see that. As you can see when it starts I want the background color to be red and after reaching a quarter of its duration I want it to be yellow but as I said animation direction to be reversed watch what happens I'll cut and paste the code again as you can see yellow is the second last thing over here watch this last cycle of animation but yellow is supposed to be my second animation but as we said, animation direction as reverse, it plays the animation from 0%, 100% and it traces back to 0%. If you specify nothing here, it plays in the normal order. You can also say alternate and it switches between various keyframes. So we'll see how that is. So yellow, blue, green, red and it switches back in the next cycle. And again, it switches back in the next cycle. So for each cycle, it will switch directions. You can also have alternate reverse. So you can see how that actually affects the animation. You can also have simple reverse. So they're pretty self-explanatory. If it's reverse, it starts from 0%, goes to 100 and comes back. If it's alternate, based on the number of iterations, it will start from 0% and play normally once. And then in the next iteration, it goes from 0%, goes to 100% and goes down the spiral. So it's kind of like a spiral. That's how it actually behaves. So you can change this. And there's another property called animation timing function so let me type that for you so animation timing function it can take several values and these basically indicate the type of animation that you want so if you leave it blank or if you don't specify this property well the default property will be applied so don't worry and if you don't remember any of these properties you can go to design and under animation you can find all of this property just select a property and you can see all of these properties over here. So I can actually pick something and you can see speed curve. So this is nothing but animation speed curve. That property is this one right here. Animation timing function. Elegant themes basically customized it and gave it their own name, but it's basically animation timing function this thing so you can select none so whatever is specified in custom CSS will be played so you can change these values and don't worry I'll also leave the values as comments right next to each function so don't worry about that okay so at the next thing is to specify keyframes at the red keyframes and then give an example and this is nothing but the name of the animation that you specified here. So if you say something like your dog, so this should be dog because that's basically the code for the animation that we are putting here. So these are the keyframes and in each percentage you specify the properties that you want. So maybe if you don't want to change the position at each keyframe or you can remove the position property there 
and also put, uh, or maybe if you want the position to change alternately so we can remove position from every alternate keyframe and we'll see how that looks like so first it changes position and then it comes back changes position changes color and then it comes back so by basically tweaking and playing with these values you achieve various animations so here left means the distance that i want this element to move from the left direction and top means the distance i want this element or the space that should be added on top of this element so if i specify something here that property will be applied there so initially i want it to be 100 percent pixels and then i don't i just want the color to change and then again i want the top and left to change so that's what's happening so this is how you achieve various positions you can tweak these you can give top left bottom and right of course if you use top don't use bottom if you use left don't use right because they're all similar so if i have a moz prefix here it doesn't mean a different code it just means the same code just to work on mozilla firefox so if it's webkit it means i'm trying to make this code work on safari based browsers so that's what each prefix means so when i share the code in the description it will have all the prefixes so don't worry about that i'm just explaining it for the sake of simplicity so that you'll understand the concepts better next i want to animate the box shadow of this particular row so i'll just remove the background color here so that you can clearly see the box shadow properly and this color blue is not working on this row as the row itself doesn't have any text so you can also remove this one so if it's a text element make sure you can add a color red so this won't work only the background color will work for a row because the row doesn't have any text so as i want to animate the property called box shadow i can remove the code in each keyframe so i'm actually doing it and you can also change these percentages to whatever values you want so if you want this keyframe at 80 percent you can do that you can also add any other keyframes that you want it can be any number between 0 and 100 so so i'll just keep leave these keyframes as these i'll also remove the animation direction from here and also animation timing function i'll just leave everything as is i'll just have animation duration of course i want the animation name as the same one or maybe let's call it example one so whatever i call it i need to change it here at zero percent i want my box shadow to have five pixels five pixels width and a blue color so initially when the animation starts i want this row to have a box shadow of five pixels height and five pixels width with blue color and when the animation reaches 25 percent i'll just copy paste this so when my animation reaches 25 percent i want the box shadow to have 10 pixels by 10 pixels width and maybe the color to red again let's copy and paste this again at 50 percent or when my animation reaches 50 percent of the duration i want my box shadow to be at 15 pixels each 15 pixels width 15 pixels height and maybe the color i can change it to violet i guess and at 75 percent i just want to bring back the color that i have at 25 percent so i'll just copy the same property here so it will start with blue box shadow increases the size changes to red increases the size changes the color to violet and then it at 75 percent it reduces the size to 10 pixels 10 pixels and it changes the color back to red and finally when the animation ends or at the end of the animation it will have blue color box shadow i'll also add five pixels 
blur to it. So let's see how this animation looks like. So I've just cut the code. I'll put it back and you can see the box shadow animating based on the properties that we specified. As we said, the animation iteration count to be three. So this is the third time the box shadow is animating here. And finally, it reaches this value that we specified to this. So you can animate any property that you want. So maybe if you want this element to rotate, you can do that. If you want this element to translate, you can do that. And you can do anything that you want with animations. But to keep this video simple, I'm just explaining one more animation. So this is how you animate the box shadow of an element using CSS animations. That I want to animate is text that increases its font size and then reduces back to its original state. So I'll pick this heading or this particular text module over here. I'll just click on advanced under custom CSS under main element. I'll paste the code for the box shadow. As you can see, when I pasted the code for box shadow, even the box shadow of this text starts animating. As I said, these CSS animations apply to almost all elements except the text specific animations that we're going to add here. Of course, a column or a row or a section cannot have text. Only text element contains text. So if you're applying text animations, make sure you're applying it to a particular text module such as this one. So at each keyframe, I removed the box shadow properties because the property that I want to animate here is the font size. And maybe I want to increase the duration to eight seconds. And I think I just want this animation to play twice. So that's fine. So at zero percent, I want the font size to be 40 pixels. Let's let me copy and paste it. And I'll simply change the values at each keyframe. At 25%, I want it to increase to maybe 45, 450 is too big. And at 50%, I want it to reach 50 pixels. And then again, I want it to gradually reduce and return to its original state. You can also add additional keyframes such as at 80%, you can specify another property. And you can also say any property for text. So at 100%, maybe you can have blue colored text or maybe you can have blue text property here. And before adding custom CSS, make sure you clear out all the text or any other formattings that you had. So previously this was a heading. So I selected this one and changed it to plain paragraph so that it won't have any font size styling and all that stuff. If you style your element using the visual way, make sure you clear all the visual settings and set it to plain paragraph text so that you can animate it. And you can click on CSS animations. Let's see how our animation looks like. You can see the text increasing in size and going back to its original position. You can see. So I think, yeah, that's what it specified. Okay. Now I want to change the color of the text at each keyframe. So first I want red and then I want the color to be pink. And then at 50%, I want the text color to be violet. Yes. Black and at 100%, I want the color to be blue, which is the original color. So let me cut this and paste it again. As you can see, text changes its color and also the size because that's what you specified here. And finally, when it reaches 100%, you can see how that's animating based on the properties we specified at each keyframe. And finally, the animation is over and text returns to its original state where this is the original 
state of the text. In order to make the animation more subtle, you can animate it. You can increase the duration, you can increase the keyframes. You can also pick a text size that's near to the final keyframe. So maybe you can pick 35 pixels as the initial text size. And you can see how that animation will look like. Watch this. And that's it. We want to make the text a bit smooth. Add animation timing function. And you can try ease out or ease in. So you can try ease. We'll see how that looks like. It kind of looks better. There are also ease in, ease out, linear properties for animation timing function. So I think that's good. And f to finally wrap it up, I'll also change the font family or basically the font of the text. So here I want maybe I'll change it to Arial here. We'll see how that font will look like. If you don't know the values, you can pick them from the Visual Builder. You can see the font changes in size and also the font family changes as well. You can observe that. There are a lot of properties that you can change. Of course, you can also add a background gradient to text and a lot more. So by using CSS animations, you can animate any property. So you can animate any section, row, column or module. And few animations are specific to those particular module. So for example, you can animate text only for the text modules or the modules that have text. But the box shadow, position, color, background color, these are all common for all the modules, sections, columns and rows. So, so this is a brief introduction to CSS animations for the Divi Visual Builder. I will be making more videos on this. So if you are new to the channel, consider subscribing. I will talk to you in the next video. Peace on. And that's it for now and hope you guys like this video. If you did, make sure to give a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and if you need anything else don't hesitate to ask i'm ready to help you catch you in the next video peace